Welcome one and welcome all. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Monday. It is May 1st. Now, no big surprises. We're going to do what we always do. We're going to focus in on some hot OTC and penny stocks that can make us some money. Now, you're wondering, where do I get the stocks we're going to talk about? Well, I don't get them from the news. I know a lot of people like to find hot news and then play that. But you know what? I see a lot of hot news get no chart activity. So I go directly to the charts. I pull up a scan and I just start looking at the charts right down that scan. And I'm looking for chart setups, breakouts, lots of volume coming in. Then I go looking for news to back up that chart. A warm chart, it only needs a little catalyst to get it move. It doesn't have to be a big old hot piece of news. And I got a bunch of those for us today. Let me show you what I found. Yeah, man, let's get this going. First ticker we're going to take a look at, you're probably familiar with. This is Natural Shrimp Incorporated, ticker SHMP. She had a really good day, finishing off at a little over seven and a half cents with a little more than 77% gains. And when you look at the chart, you can see the heat. That volume is building up right now. She is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like to call this the better tier. It's better because the company has to audit their financials. That makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. Speaking of trustworthy, they've got those two green ticks we like to see. The verified profile and the transfer agent verified. If you choose to be in an OTC stock for a long hold, it would behoove you. Do you like that word? It would behoove you to find these green ticks before you get in. Now, if you're just going to be trading the stock for a short swing or a day trade, don't you worry about that too much. Now, this is the catalyst for shrimp. This is a news press that came out April 28th. Natural Shrimp announces filing of updated registration statement on Form S4 in connection with the proposed merger with Yoda Acquisition Corp. Yoda Acquisition is a SPAC on the major exchange, and that's how they're getting to the NASDAQ. Originally, they had planned on going to the NASDAQ, but through a reverse split. And that's why we were all buying our 100 shares. That's a whole nother story. But they're not doing a reverse split anymore. They're doing it through a SPAC, which is a heck of a lot better for everybody. Not only do we get to keep our shares, but shrimp gets a pile of money. That's the deal when you come in with the SPAC. The SPAC gives them a whole bunch of money to help expand their business. Now, right now, I think shrimp has two or three facilities already built here in America. They grow live shrimp in these huge vats and they put their facilities centralized amongst a lot of cities so that they have like a 300 mile radius so they can deliver fresh shrimp to restaurants and stores. Now, it is that S4. That's the catalyst. That is the last piece of the puzzle for the merger. Once that's put in, it's imminent. It's going to happen at any time. And that's why we're watching it now. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, nice jump, about 300, 350% there from 2.6 million to 8.2 million. Share structure, well, I'm going to tell you right now, I am no longer looking up the floats. It really isn't giving me the float. It's just giving me a whole lot of other numbers to consider, and that's not helping me whatsoever. So we're not looking up the float. We're going to have to deal with what numbers they give us here. The outstanding share count, too high, 811 million shares. And the float, it could be anywhere from 603 to 725 million, maybe. Looking at the financials for shrimp. At the end of their fiscal year, March 2022, they had $33,000. Got to remember to put three zeros behind any of the numbers here. On the quarterly, at the end of December of 2022, they were up to $97,000. Now, I've got to expect that the next financial is going to be better, a lot better, because they've got these two or three facilities doing business right now. But that's not the catalyst. That would just be a bonus. This closing of this merger, that is the catalyst. Disclosures, well, there really isn't anything over here more important than that S4 right now. So that is the big deal. Let's take a look at that chart. You know where we're at. That's right. This is Thinkorswim, the free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade. So we are looking at a six-month, four-hour chart for natural shrimp, ticker SHMP. We got a high bubble back in October of about 20 cents, and maybe five days ago, we hit a low of three and a half cents. Now, I've got a support drawn here. You can see it came down, bounced on it here, 
bounced on it there and right now we have just crossed over it and believe it or not we are on top of it we've had lots of volume building up these last few days and look at how far she's traveled she has gone from underneath the nine crossing the 20 and the 50 and then covering this huge spance between the 50 and the 200 and she is above it right now all that volume coming in and the oscillators look like waves tsunamis every single one of them is pushing to the moon Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view, downhill trend till it hit the low bubble, then we have sideways, and then just the last two days, she has taken off, hitting that high and pulling back just a little bit. Our oscillators are still ripping on the one-hour. Everything is very, very hot. Five-day, five-minute. Well, she was flattened to these last two days. And as you can see, that 200 is rolling right on up. Everything is really looking good. And our oscillators, all of them, still are on fire and pushing to the moon. This deal is about ready to close, folks. And there's a lot of people been watching this for a long time. And they're more excited about this merger than they were about the reverse split. I guarantee you that. So keep your eye on SHMP. Got another hot OTC stock for you. This is OPTHF, Optimize Health. She had a good day too. Finished at 19 cents with almost 16% gains. And she is on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. Not only do they have to audit their financials, they have to give us all the information they have on the company. That simply makes them the most transparent, the most trustworthy. Speaking of trustworthy, look at all those green ticks. Green ticks are good news. So they've got everything we want here. And the one I like the most is penny stock exempt. This tells me that they've been in business for three to five years, had millions of dollars of assets during that time, and they've kept up with their financial filings. So they've proven to us that they are responsible. They are reliable. They are not a risky startup company. Now, even though that price is 19 cents and they're on the OTC market, they are not a penny stock, but we're going to look at it anyways. So this is our catalyst for the company. This is news that came out today. The company enters Australian medical MDMA and psilocybin, that's LSD, market with Mind Medicine Australia distribution agreement. This is the news here. The company tells us that they are an end-to-end Canadian-based drug manufacturer and formulator licensed by Health Canada to produce and supply psychedelic substances. They are pleased to announce they have entered into a long-term distribution agreement with Mind Medicine Australia, a leading charitable organization and patient advocacy group seeking to alleviate suffering caused by mental illness in Australia. Under the signed purchase order, Optimize has agreed to export products to Australia on July 1st, 2023. Boy, they didn't waste any time. Look here. The rescheduling of the psychedelics becomes effective on July 1st, 2023. So they are right there. They are going to be helping people with post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, alcoholism, and they're going to be doing it with psychedelics, LSD and MDMA. So what was the relative volume around the company today? We had a little bounce, maybe about 50%, going from 11,000 to 16,600. Share structure for Optimi. Outstanding shares, about 87 million, and it looks like our float could be between 60 and 77 million. That one right there. Financials for the company. All right, at the end of September 2022, they had $58,000. Looking at their quarterly, uh, September, they're not doing much better. They're just hanging on. They're paying the bills. They're paying themselves right now. Disclosures, we have no SEC filings to look at, and they are all caught up on their financials. So let's go take a look at that chart. Well, you know, we're looking at a six-month, four-hour view for ticker OPTHF. We got a high back here in September of about 44 cents. We had a low of 13 cents at the end of December. And she was pretty much going sideways, just riding on that 50-day SMA. Got real close to the 200 here, started scraping her head across it. In the last three days, she's been working her way across it, and now she is on top of it. I can't say the volume is very strong, but the oscillators are looking good. Our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, and our MACD, 
these are pretty much the same. You read them the same. Both of these are pushing up. Our uh, RSI is pulling back a little bit right now because of this fallback. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, she's gotten up over to 200, and she's staying up there, right? She is bouncing on it. She came under it, but right back up on top, under it, right back up on top. And now she's starting to show some enthusiasm, like she doesn't want to go down anymore. She does want to go up. And all of our oscillators, except the RSI, are pushing up and looking good. Again, with this pullback here, we did have a pullback on our RSI as well. Five day, five minute. Not much going on here. She's pretty much going sideways, except for today. She did get that big bounce going from 17 cents to 19 cents, pulled back, and she's starting to climb again on top of her nine. You can't climb till you're on top of the nine. Oscillators, they're all looking about the same. We still got our MACD and our PPO pushing up and our RSI is slightly falling. So everything looks good. And you got to remember, she is at that breakout point. Looking at that four hour, six month view, she has just gotten over the 200 day SMA. And you only need a little catalyst to get a chart to move if it is set up in a warm zone. So I think OPTHF has a good chance of taking some gains. Put it on your watch list. See if I'm wrong. Does this ticker look familiar to you? It should. We covered it April 11th, back when it was $1.38. Now we're almost 100% from there, and the chart has been on fire ever since we looked at it, and it doesn't look like it's going to quit anytime soon. This is Tio, ticker TIO, Tingo Group Incorporated. She did finish the day at $2.63 with almost 15% gains. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. Now, I think I'm having a deja vu moment here. We covered this April 11th. This news, the hot news, came out April 26th. Well, I know I've covered this news. It must have been in my live stream. I just can't remember because this is big news, folks. Tingo Mobile signs exclusive agreement with Prime Commodity Exchange and All Farmers Association of Nigeria, securing considerable produce supply nationwide warehousing facilities, and enhanced commodity trading opportunities. Now, there's a lot of information in this news, and I'm not going to go through it all, but I do want to point out some big key ports here. Strategic Partnership uniquely positions Tingo to monetize Nigeria's crop ecosystem across its population of 213 million and the global export market. Tingo Mobile partners with PCX and AFAN in the exclusive use of AFAN's existing network of warehouses across Nigeria for a minimum of 30 years. Imagine that, a deal for 30 years. Now, there's a lot of information here, and I'm just going to tag on to some of the juicy, important facts. In this deal, Tingo is getting 232 warehouses for crops and produce that cover the entire country of Nigeria. But included in the deal is the right to expand that to 80,000 warehouses. And the deal is going to cover all of those expenses. Now, check this out. This is super for them. The agreement grants Tingo Mobile the right of first refusal to purchase or trade the crops and other produce received into the partnership's warehouses, which is expected to provide a substantial and valuable source of supply for Tingo Foods food processing business, and Tingo's DMCC commodity trading and export business. The company makes food, so they're going to be able to use this food for their own products, and they have an exchange where they sell bulk food on the market, and they're going to have the right to do that too. So not only do they control the warehouses, but they control all the goods inside as well. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, let's get over to relative volume and see. Oh, nice jump. Yeah, we went from 1.6 million to 5.5 million. Share structure for the company. Outstanding shares, 163 million. And there's no way I'm buying that it is 5 million in the float. You may want to look this one up, but I don't think it's that low. I think it's somewhere near 128 or 158 million, somewhere like that. So don't get too excited. Financials for Tingo Group. Ooh, they're making money, and look how they're making money. Wow. This jumped from 2019 at 477000 to 
55 million $146 million. Holy cripe. Quarterly, same thing going on over here. 9 million, 11 million, 13 million. Just in that one quarter, they did $110 million. The quarter before that, they only did 13 million. So they are growing at a phenomenal rate and it is time for another financial. That in itself can be a catalyst as well. So they've got a huge deal. They're making huge revenues and their financial is right around the corner. Disclosures for the company. DFA 51. What is this? I'm not quite sure. Let's see what we got here. Tingo Group, stockholders, a special meeting. So they got a shareholders meeting coming up. Anything else over here? We got an 8K also today. What's this one say? Corporate presentation. Ah, see, they've come out with a presentation. This is a digital brochure. This breaks down the information about the company so that the investors can easily understand it. So if you really want to know more about this company, they have a presentation now. So let's go take a look at the chart for Teal because she is ripping. What I tell you, this chart is on fire. This is ticker TIO, Tingo Group, six month, four hour view. We got our low bubble back here in October of 57 cents and our high came today of $2.65. As you can see, that volume is getting very strong right now. Look back here. That is incredible. She started her run at the end of March. She was down here at 80 cents. She's gone up to 265. That's over 300% gain in this uptrend right now. This is where we looked at it on the 11th at $1.38. She has been running uphill on her nine, came through the 20 day, but did not touch the 50, back on top of the 20, and she's riding on her nine day SMA. Oscillators. They look good. Everything is on fire down here. Our PPO and our MACD are climbing. RSI is in the overbought, just about 80. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. I don't expect anything to look bad on these smaller time views now. We got a low bubble in this corner, 94 cents, and a high in this corner of 265, so you got over 200% gains in the 20 days. She's on top of that 200, hasn't even come close to it. She's been bouncing off of her 50-day SMA. Oscillators, still looking brilliant, folks. MACD and the PPO are still climbing. RSI is just at the overbought at 69.7. Five day, five minute, looking great. Low bubble in this corner, $1.68. High bubble over here of $2.65. Bouncing off of that $200, respecting it. And now she's graduated up to the 50 day SMA, bouncing on that one. Everything is looking good. Our aftermarket activity is carrying her sideways. Doesn't look dangerous. We do see a little bit of pullback on our PPO, but our MACD is trying to do a recovery and we have higher lows on our last three bars. Things are looking good on TIO. She's been climbing for a long time. I keep my eye on her. Last ticker we're taking a look at is ticker EMGE. This is Emergent Health Corps. Got a great chart. It is set up for a breakout. We just need a catalyst. And that's the problem. I can't find a catalyst anywhere. What I found was a big problem. But that's okay, because if they fix this problem in a timely manner, it will translate into a catalyst and get this chart moving, in my opinion. So EMGE, she finished the day at 00325 with almost 8.5% gains. Now the problem, she is on the pink limited information tier. That means they're late on one or more of their financial filings, and if they don't get them caught up in time, they're going to end up on the expert market. Now, when you're on the expert market, your shares cannot be bought or sold. And if you're invested in the company, you're in limbo with them. Now, once they get those financials caught up and filed, they'll come back to the open market and you'll be back with them. Now, they've only got so much time to fix this problem. If they don't get it done in time, this is what happens. They get a grace period in yellow here and it's a countdown. They've got 15 days to get the problem fixed or they're going down to the expert market. Problem is, they don't tell you when the end of that 15-day period is, at least not here. They do show us over here under quote. Click this, it'll bring you to this page. Just go about halfway down, look for proprietary quote eligibility, and it's right there, grace period. And they tell us it is the 15th of this month. 
That is their last day to get this problem fixed. Now, they did just file their annual report today. They got it in today. So does that mean that everything's fixed and everything's kosher? No. With an annual report, they have to also file an attorney letter. Since they don't have a CPA looking at it, they got to have an attorney. Once that attorney letter comes in, this dark and defunct grace period and pink limited information will all disappear. And I think the charts will start to run. So what does this company do? Let's see if I can find that box. <laughs> Emergent curates, develops and sells products in the regenerative health space. Its products comprise of ingestibles as well as topicals for the whole family. And they consider part of your family your pets as well. Ooh, we got a lot here, 406 million, and it looks like about half of that is going to be our float. Financials for EMGE. We got nothing at the end of 2021. How about 2022? Yeah, we've got some money here, 14,000, 1,000. Finally, something to talk about, 185000 So again, we can say they're paying their bills and they're paying themselves, but they haven't got a whole lot going on in that department. Disclosures for EMGE. Uh, oh, these are old. These are going back a few months. So we've got nothing here to look at. What there is to look at is the chart. I like the chart. Can I show you the chart? <laughs> Let's go look at the chart. Yep, that's a six-month, four-hour chart for EMGE, Emergent Health. Six months ago, we had a high of 2.2 cents, a huge fall, coming down more than 1,000%, down to 0019. A tremendous amount of volume came here when she broke the 200, but she failed to hold it, came back under, and right now she's making another attempt. She was underneath all of her SMAs, hitting a slow bubble, bouncing over the 50, and now all of her bars have higher lows, and she's working towards that 200-day SMA. Our volume is getting stronger, and our oscillators are all pushing up on the 4-hour. You can't go wrong if every oscillator is pushing up. Looking at that one hour, 20 day. So she was kind of going sideways here until the 50 got close. She got up over that 50, showed interest. She wanted to get on top of the 200, had this abrupt fall and has bounced up. And she is now up over that 200, hitting a high of 0036 and leveling off on top of her nine day SMA. And all of our oscillators look really good. Even our MACD, which was coming close, is now bouncing and starting to climb again. Five day, five minute. So there's our low bubble of 0019. She went sideways for three days, got up over that 50, lots of strength, fell back to the 20, bounced, and she's bouncing on that 20. She is not getting near the 50. She looks good, folks. Oscillators are all kind of planed out. She kind of went sideways most of the day, and that's what all of our oscillators look like. But if this attorney letter comes in, in the next 15 days, this is going to run. Now, I wouldn't say buy it now until I see the attorney letter. So this is going to be a very iffy play. They are in hot water right now, and you don't want to get burned playing it. But this could run. If that attorney letter comes in, there could be a lot of excitement. Thanks for stopping in, folks. I really do appreciate your time. We just covered four stocks there. They've all been taking gains. They've all got nice charts. They've all got reasons to run. But of course, I didn't cover everything. So please come behind me and do your own due diligence. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.